Good morning, all of you. Shiva Manjari. Bar magnets, we discussed about as a dipole. Dipole with dipole moment and also especially for given bar magnet, how to find the magnetic connection. At a point, axial points, equatorial points, drawing vectors. So today's session will be completely on bar magnet, both concepts and as well as numericals. So to begin with, uh, look at this example. In all the examples, do remember we have to write the vectors. Induction vectors are moment, dipole moment vectors. Now the example says that P is an axial point of some bar magnet at which the induction due to that magnet is capital B. Some symbol is given or some number may be due south. He says the induction magnitude is B and it is acting due south, geographically southward direction. If the magnet is now turned by 90 degrees clockwise, find the induction at the same point. So first let us see the different cases. If direction sense is not given in this example, this will be a very simplest example. Why? See, first let me do without any sense of direction. <coughs> Supposing if this is what is a bar magnet, and now this point P is an axial point according to the example at which the induction is capital <coughs> B. Supposing this is North Pole and South Pole. Now, the induction is always along the axial length from South Pole to North Pole. That vector you will get it as this one. This is what is B. No sense of direction here to begin with. Now, if the magnet is turned by 90 degrees, either clockwise or anticlockwise, suppose I do it in the clockwise sense, then the magnet position will be this one. Now, this becomes the position of the magnet as a clockwise rotation North Pole and South Pole. What is the change that has come here? We will find that initially P was an axial point. Now when magnet is turned by 90 degrees, the same point becomes the equatorial point. And one more thing is that, is there any change in the, uh, in the distance term? No, because we always know that the distance of any point from a dipole is from its center. Therefore, it is turned up about its center, no change of distance. So rotation of the magnet, will make an equatorial point axial point or axial point turns into an equatorial point for a rotation of 90 degrees. Supposing if it is 180 degree rotation, yes, axial point remains axial point and equatorial point remains as axial point. The multiples of 180, the same case. And now the multiples of odd multiples of 90s, 90s, 270s and so on will have the case where equatorial point becoming axial or axial becoming equatorial without any change in <coughs> distance. <clears throat> now, yesterday's result was for a point, for two points which are at same distance, one at the axial and another at equatorial, what was the result you remember? Axial point, the induction is <coughs> double that at the equatorial point. Now since axial point has become equatorial point after rotation, now the new induction will be B by 2. Got it? Why B by 2? Because axial has become equatorial without any change in distance that is have. If equatorial becomes axial without any change in distance, it will be double direction. Therefore, the answer is B by 2. And now also you can find, you run, let us now write the vector. This is north and south. Equatorial point induction is always parallel to axial and from north pole to south pole. So this is what is the new magnetic moment I got B dash. Now we'll find that. Not only the magnitude, but also direction you see. Now B dash is B by 2 and the rotation is also by 90 degrees. Now this is what is the simplest case if no sense of direction like south is was given. But in the given example, it is now the case of in using the direction. How to write the orientation, sorry, even before that how to write the position of the given bar magnet and the axial point. Now he says, P is an axial point at which, first let us take this geographical north and therefore south and uh, let me take this as east and it becomes west. Now first we will consider a point and uh, let us write the induction vector. Now supposing if this is what is the point P and he says induction is due south. Induction is due south. Now we have to show the position of the magnet. Now P is an axial point he says, therefore let me write this is now the position of the magnet. Is that okay? Because now it becomes 
it becomes <coughs> the axial line. Now we have to represent the poles for the dipole. Now since remember any axial point, the induction is from south to north. What our meaning? And what is the meaning of that? If the point is nearer the south pole, it is towards south pole. If it is nearer to north pole, then it is away from north pole. Now therefore, see this vector is due south. Therefore, it should be in north pole. Then it satisfies the condition. Yes, B bar along the axis from south pole to north pole. So this is what is the initial case of induction for the given data. Now let us make the changes that are given. Now it is turned by 90 degrees and clockwise. So clockwise sends 90 degrees. Clockwise sends and 90 degrees. Is that okay? Clockwise sends 90 degrees. Then you see what happened. This north, yes, and the south here. So now that this is P point, which is an equatorial point and an equatorial point, the induction is from north to south parallel to axial line. So for this axial line, if you do, now this is what is the vector that you are getting, the new vector is B dash. So now B becoming B dash and according to our earlier discussion, since axial point has become equatorial point, the induction is have, so B dash is equal to B by 2, yes, now you can see the vector which is in the east, so it is B dash is equal to B, due east is our answer, due east is our answer. Any example with the sense of direction, any example with vectors, so an ordinary student without any preparation, it's very very difficult and the entire second year, starting from electrostatics to the magnetism or even other topics that will continue, this knowledge of vectors makes things very very difficult whereas if you are really good at these simple fundamentals of vectors, answers are too easy. So now hope you got the answer. Now once we know how to draw the vectors for magnetic induction for a given bar magnet, now let me show some more examples where I am making use of this vector relation. Now here I show, now here I show some two or three combinations of dipoles, the magnetic moments. Here supposing I say this is a magnet of moment M1, this is another magnet moment M2, I have said N2, S2 and O is a given point and here I am just giving you as a conceptual thing because in the data all these are distances and other things. Why? Because from center of the first magnet to this four given point of observation, second magnet to the point of observation, all these distances, moments are the data. Now the point is that for such any such combination file, then it magnetic induction at the point of observation. Now rule is very simple. First one, draw vectors, then add vectors. Neat and see the examples, it will be just one or two lines after once you draw these vectors. Now, first vector due to first fact that O happens to be yes, it is not an so equatorial point and it is yes, parallel to line. This vector becomes B1 north to south. Now, for the second magnet also, this O is equatorial point only and the equatorial point again parallel north to south. Yes, this is what is B2. Right? Now we see the two vectors being uh, parallel, B and O, I am now waiting for magnitude as simply B1 plus B2, parallel vectors, magnitude plus anti-parallel for any other angles, we know that famous parallel of vectors like that. So now it is B1 plus B2. Supposing here, in this case, I have shown a different orientation where this point O, see, with respect to magnet M1, it is an equatorial point, therefore I will write it as B1. When you are writing B at axial and equatorial points, please do remember, axial point you get 2M by R cube term and for equatorial point you get only M by R cube term, of course you have that mirror before part. So now you have B1, 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 what will be the vector? From north to south parallel to axial line. So this will be B1 due to first magnet, right? So for second magnet, M2, again, this will be an axial line. 
this will be an axial line. In such case, what happens? Now you can see it is the point nearer to north, therefore along the axial line, nearer north pole means away from north pole, this is what is B2. If it is if it was south pole, you will write it towards the south pole. So drawing vectors is the key, and after that the answer is only one line. Therefore, now here again I am writing you B at O is B1 difference B2, higher value minus lower value we are writing. Now in any such case, we have two vectors anti-parallel. The case the magnitudes becoming zero, this point O becomes null point where the net magnetic induction due to these two magnet becomes zero. So even such cases, see one, two, I, have, I will use for some more and I will ask whether given point O can be a null point or not. Or I will show one, two, three cases and I will ask A, B, C cases in which of the cases the net magnetic induction, in which of the alignments, which of the arrangements, the net magnetic induction will be in the increasing orders or decreasing orders. See, these are very, very tough examples because writing vectors is the cup of tea for only very, very few students. You can see the ease of the examinations. Remembering our ability to draw the vectors is the key. Now, in the same example, supposing yesterday we were talking about or even for that matter, electrostatics, electromagnetics, many a times we talked of uh, null points. Similarly here, supposing these are two short dipoles. I stress that point because 99% if not 100% our examples are only the case of short dipoles. Now these are two short dipoles. Two the dipoles moment centers C1 and C2. This uh, separation is R. This is uh, magnet of moment M1. This is of magnet moment uh, M2. Right? And now N1, S1, here N2, S2. Now here you remember whether there is a possibility for any null point. Again, that is not algebraic sum, therefore since it is vectors to south pole, it is towards south. North pole means away from north. Therefore what we find is that both the vectors B1 and B2 will be parallel, no question of any such null point. Therefore now for the null point to arise, it should be, yes, light poles facing each other. Null poles facing each other and then we write the condition B1 is equal to B2. Supposing this distance of null point from one of the magnets the M1 I have taken, if suppose this happens to be a null point at a distance B, then it is the same case since B proportional to 1 by R cube relation. When I still have mentioned this uh, result, D is equal to the distance between the two magnets upon, yes, this is M2 by M1 cubed root plus 1 and it is the case of getting between the two magnets likewise. So for any given combination of magnets, writing the vectors and adding the vectors will be a very very simple popular example. Simple but very popular case of uh, magnetic dipole plates in an external uniform magnetic field. One or two cases will come, we will we'll discuss one in detail and then based on that simple principle we can also do few more extended couplers. The case of bar magnet, same capital M being the magnetic length, sorry magnetic moment, placed in an external uniform magnetic field such that the angle between B bar and M bar is theta. Here the most important thing is the angle theta is between B bar and M bar and how we write M bar it is always along the axis from south pole to north pole. Therefore the given example if I show you that, this is south pole and north pole, therefore if this is what is the line that I show, then this angle is theta. In such case, the two poles experiencing equal and opposite forces, net force is zero. In the case of uniform magnetic field, net force is zero, therefore no question of translating motion for the bar magnet. Whereas these two forces uh, equal opposite along different lines of action, satisfying all the conditions of a couple, therefore there will be a torque. Now the most important point to be remembered is what is the purpose of the torque? External magnetic field will exert a torque on the dipole and the tendency is to align the magnets in the direction of the field. Right? 
So torque always, torque acting on the dipole always tends to keep the magnet in the direction of the fit. Why that tendency? Again, we will see in, the, in, 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 in terms of energy concepts as well. Now here you see, now the, what is the torque? Torque is equal to MR cross V bar, cross products, moment vector and induction vector. Order is very very important, scalar form, MB sin theta and uh, all about this theta. To mention two particular things, I am now right. showing you a case. See, in this case, this magnet is placed around the direction of external magnetic field. Yes, in both the cases, the magnet is along V bar only, but you will find a difference in uh, specific if you look at it carefully. Now, here you will find that in the direction of magnetic field, it is there, north pole and south pole, but whereas the other case I am showing you, supposing this is south pole and north pole. What is the difference in this case? See, in this case, this is what is V bar and this is what is M bar. The vectors of parallel angle is 0 degrees. Angle is 0 degrees. So, for this case, I am writing theta is equal to 0 degrees and tau is equal to 0 degrees. Next case, you will see that if this is what is the V bar vector, yes, M bar vector south to north, you will find it as anti parallel vectors theta is equal to 180 degrees. And in this case also sin theta 0, torque is 0. So in both the cases, torque 0. Torque 0 is what is the condition for rotational equilibrium. Rotational equilibrium. Therefore, now you see. This is also rotational equilibrium. This is also rotational equilibrium. In both the cases, equilibrium is there. But with a big difference that this equilibrium is what is called as stable equilibrium. Stable equilibrium and this is what is called as unstable equilibrium. What is the difference between the two? Stable equilibrium, once equilibrium is attained and then it is slightly displaced. And the same equilibrium if it is reached and regains, then that equilibrium is what is called as stable equilibrium. Other case, if equilibrium is there and slight disturbance of equilibrium position, but it is not regaining that equilibrium again, then it is what is called as unstable equilibrium. Along with these two in the classroom, we have also mentioned about neutral equilibrium also. Please go through your notebook. So stable equilibrium theta 0, unstable equilibrium theta equal to 180, both cases torque 0. And for torque to be maximum, you see sin theta equal to 1, theta equal to 90 degrees. When we are writing about these theta values, understanding the question is very, very important. What is that point? Supposing if I say a dipole placed in an external magnetic field is experiencing maximum torque. After what, after what rotation the torque will be held is the question. So a very simple example. Torque to be maximum theta equal to 90 degrees. That is, bar magnet placed perpendicular to the magnetic field theta equal to 90. So maximum torque will be M into B. Now he says, torque to be held. Torque to be held, the sin theta should be equal to 1 by 2. So sin theta equal to 1 by 2 means theta equal to 30 degrees. What does it mean? Actually, it was initially for the torque to be maximum, it was at right angles to the magnetic field, and for torque to be held, it has come to 30 degree position. Remember. Now, this 30 degree is the position but not the angle of rotation. So, for the angle of rotation, 90 to 30 means the rotation of 60 degrees will be the case. Like that. Now, as I have told you, a torque is there, and uh, supposing if any of the magnets is to be rotated, is to be displaced in a magnetic field, then what is to be done to overcome this torque? So whenever there is force of torque and a displacement or changes against force of torque, our case is that what is to be done and in the case of uh, conservative forces, they will be stored as potential energy. Therefore, in this case, where dipole placed in external magnetic field, we get the concept of potential energy also. And the potential energy U is negative of M B cos theta. This term is to be used along with the negative sign, you remember, right? It was the same case, you can have a comparison with electric dipole placed in an external uniform electric field. Same comparison of torques, moments, works, and everything you will have. This U is equal to minus MB cos theta, therefore what is U? Maximum, maximum potential energy will be, right? Plus MB, 
But theta is equal to 180 degrees, that is what is unstable equilibrium position. That is what is potential to maximum. In fact, this will be a concept in physics in any way with the maximum potential energy, it will be an unstable equilibrium. And now you see what is the U minimum. U minimum is not zero. A number of times, many of the examples we see the minimum value is to be zero. But there are few cases where minimum is less than zero. In this case, it is a minus mv for theta is equal to zero degrees. This is what is the minimum energy. And now we get the concept. We earlier said that the tendency of the torque is to align the magnet in the direction of the magnetic field. That is theta equal to zero. To make theta equal to zero. Why theta equal to zero? Because for this case, energy is minimum. And we know that as a general principle in the nature, lesser energy always gives greater stability. And that is what is the reason for the torque and alignment along the magnetic field. Now, as an extension of this topic, what we have uh, discussed here in the classroom is that supposing, supposing a magnetic field and the dipole is uh, suspended, placed, suspended or placed. Now this is what is the magnet. I will write it as M bar and this is what is B bar. And after something, what happens due to torque? Yes, alignment happens theta equal to zero. Now, in this position, supposing if we displace it some by angle theta, if it is displaced by some angle theta, what happens? Again, torque will come into picture. Because of the torque, yes, this uh, alignment takes place. But once it comes to theta equal to zero degree position, all of a sudden, torque becomes zero, but angular velocity does not become zero because of that inertial factor, it will come the other way. So once again, theta starts increasing. One more time, torque tor tor So earlier it was torque, in this case, torque tor tor acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Clockwise or anti-clockwise, the order, the sense of direction gets reversed. So this is the case where, when a dipole is suspended or placed in an external uniform magnetic field, it will have angular SHL. It will have angular SHL. Like supposing if this is what is the magnet, we have suspended in a field which is in the horizontal plane. Now, slight disturbance of this uh, orientation or position will be the magnet to have oscillations. Which type of oscillations? It is not this kind of linear oscillation. What you find is that this kind of oscillations will find which is uh, popularly called as angular resection. And the properties of, characteristics of these angular resection are very, very popular. Simple and very popular examples you find. So in the case of angular resection of dipole suspended in external uniform magnetic field, torque, sorry, time period is equal to 2 pi root of I by MB. Look at each and every term, time period of oscillation, right? This is what is I. I referring to moment of inertia of the bar magnet. Moment of inertia of bar magnet, which can be considered to be a kind of small rectangular plate you can consider. And this is what is the axis passing to the center and perpendicular to the plane. Therefore, this I is equal to mass of the bar magnet by 12. Remember this M not for magnetic moment. Mass of the magnet by 12 times L square plus b square where l for length and b for breadth when we consider the magnet with this this being length let me write capital l not to this is what is l and this is what is breadth b and now b is very small as compared to l therefore b square we neglect almost all the cases almost all the cases when understand other way is given this speciality Therefore, I am writing this i is equal to m l square by 12 only we are using for all our examples. Of course, if b is given in specific value, we make it only this expression. But this is what is m l square by 12 only. Now, these things are very important. Why? We have to know this. Now, this what is capital M? Of course, the popular case of magnetic moment of the dipole. And this b will find the induction of external magnetic field. Now you will find all types of simple and examples to begin with. What is that? The time period or the reciprocal frequencies, comparison with the different cases, what type of changes, changes of magnets, changes of places, changes of uh, moments, different, different ways. Now if I went even by take to what is the answer, we will get all under roots, right? 
So this is P and I, directly proportional I1 by I2. Then its comparison is yes, M2 by M1. The inverse ratio and again is B2 by B1. When magnets are changing because of the changes of sizes and all, this I1 I2 will be different. Supposing identical magnets in the data, then this I1 by I2 will be 1. M2 by M1, again magnetic moments. It is also an important thing. We will find of course some examples where the magnets or the magnetic needles are coupled like that. And when do we get this case of B1 and B2? Maybe supposing if magnetic field is changed, it will arise. Or as supposing if I change from one place to another place, so from Bangalore to New York is an example given, where we find different earth's magnetic induction, they will compare the horizontal component of earth's magnetic fields like that. And even that linked with the dip is also a very good example in the consequence uh, uh, topics that we will find. So P1 by P2 or similarly F1 by F2. The data is, do remember how it is changing of uh, the different parameters. In this case, one or two simple examples we are telling you like this. What is that? Supposing I have taken two magnets, M1 and M2, moments for the ball magnets P and Q, moments are M1 and M2. Now I have to compare these moments M1 by M2. M1 by M2 is the comparison. Remember, in such case, one of the very popular cases is that now P and Q, P and Q both used at a time, both used at a time, two possible cases. How? This is how. Possible, first possibility is first magnet N1, S1, and then the second magnet is N2, S2. Yes, they are tied like this. They are supposing tied like this parallel to each other with the light poles touching like this. This time, this combination is made to oscillate and the time period or frequency will be taken as T1, frequency as F1. Now, supposing one of the magnets is reversed, one of the magnets is reversed, then this the case that arises, this supposing N1, S1 for the first magnet and this is the S2, N2 for second magnet and for this combination the time period is T2 in the same magnetic field. The first remember these are this is the case where you get parallel moments. Parallel moments therefore it is M1 plus M2 moment giving rise to time period T1 or frequency F1 and here in this case this is M1 minus M2. I consider M1 greater than M2. So M1 minus M2 the time period is T2 or frequency is F2. But for both the cases, remember that I1 plus I2, moments of inertia of the combination, since it is a scalar quantity, I1 plus I2 will be same for both. So this ratio I1 by I2 will be 1. And since it is being suspended or in the same magnetic field, this B2 by B1 is also 1. Therefore, it is only T1 by T2 equal to M2 by M1. Here M2 refers to, and also remember, also remember, one more logic, and this is what is very important thing. In all the examples, when we read the data, some tapes should be there, some implications should be there, and that is what is the smartness of the student. Here, M1 plus M2 becoming M1 minus M2, what happens to this time period? Supposing nothing is said about like poles, unlike poles, then you have to make it as a judgment. See, here we said T and M are inversely related. Therefore, more magnetic moment means lesser is the T1 and higher value will be T2. Right? So this is what is an implication. Not only in this case, I have told you many a times when we read the question, at least out of 45 neat questions, 10 to 12, we need to take some implication from the data. So this is what is the, in this case, yes, T1 less than T2. Therefore now, this will result T1 by T2 is equal to, yes, under root, yes, M1 minus M2 by M1 plus M2. Now you square on both sides, then you do the cross multiplication, right? So what will be the answer? Now we said M1 by M2. I said M1 greater than M2. You will get it as T2 squared plus T1 squared by T2 squared 
minus k1 square. I told you m1 greater than m2. That is the same case also can calculate in terms of comparison performance in terms of frequencies as well. Frequencies as well. Now you see, you have a relation like uh, t1 by t2, f1 by f2, like that, right? See one example here I show you. Supposing this is a magnetic needle. This is a magnetic needle with moment capital M or suppose it's a bar magnet, okay? It's a bar magnet. Moment is capital M and the time period for this big magnet, time period for big magnet is supposing T1 or frequency is F1. Now the data is that this magnet is cut into n equal parts parallel to axial line or perpendicular to axial line. With yesterday it was the case. We studied about uh, the magnetic moment, the changes due to cutting, bending and all. The same case here. Supposing if it is cut into n parts parallel to axial line, then we get n identical small magnets. Then what is the T small is equal to question? T small is equal to question. Now here, remember, T is equal to 2 pi. This here is a 2 pi root of i by mb i is the moment of inertia of the bigger magnet m is moment of the bigger magnet now for t small what will be the answer now this is t dash is equal to 2 pi root of i dash by m dash times p such that this i by m i by i dash by m dash will you will find equal to i by m because here the changes are happening with respect to both i and as well as m supposing m what happened yesterday's definition it is yeah let me write that m dash is equal to m by n according to our yesterday's discussion and according to the rotatory motion concept i is equal to or i dash is i upon n this is the result that we get. Therefore, now in this case, in this case, I dash by M dash is equal to I by M and hence T small is equal to T big is the result. Now I have told you it is the case where the magnet is cut into the equal parts parallel to axial line and most important point is that this ratio I by M remaining constant. Supposing if we do the other case, what is the other case? Supposing n equal parts perpendicular to axial line, perpendicular to axial line, such n pieces are cut, what happens? Here I show one more extra line as well. Here initially I and M are the magnetic moments and like uh, this uh, Moment of inertia, therefore I am writing T is equal to 2 pi under root I by M B. This is for bigger one. Now for the smaller one, what will be the case? For the smaller one, M dash is equal to M by N as usual, the result. Now earlier you see, earlier I is equal to, we have told already, M L square by 12. For bigger magnet, we have neglected the b square term with respect to the l square. Now, what will be this i dash? What will be the i dash? When it is made into n equal part, mass also becomes 1 by n times. Therefore, I am writing it as, let me write small m. Therefore, this is m by m. Length also becomes 1 by n times because it is the cutting parallel to axial line. Therefore, it is l by n squared. L by N square, therefore this is uh, this is M L square by 12, of course this 12 is there, 12 is there, so what is I dash? I dash is equal to M by 12 is already there, this is N and this is N cube, therefore I dash is equal to I by N cube is the I dash equal to, and now M dash is equal to M by N, therefore what do you observe here? So this is I dash by M dash is equal to i dash by m dash is equal to 1 by n rise uh, yes n square yes 1 by n square times you will get it as i by m since i dash by m dash is 1 by n square by i by m here you have i by m square roots right therefore here in this case what do you get earlier 
cutting parallel to axial line, each small t dash is equal to that of the bigger because of i by m remaining same. But here i by m is not remaining same. So what will be our result? Here in this case, t small is equal to 1 by n times t big. It will be 1 times the of b like that. Now, it can be any other cases like supposing a bar magnet is given. Then it is tied with another brass identical brass bar, he says. What is meant by brass bar here? Brass bar, brass happens to be a diametric material, no question of magnetic moment. Therefore, in that case, what happens? First, when the magnet is there, we write the condition T is equal to 2 pi root I for moment of inertia and denominator has MB. Now, when it is coupled with a brass bar identical, the new time period of frequency when we are writing, moment of inertia I becomes I1 plus I2, identical nature, therefore it becomes 2 I. But in the denominator, that M remains M only because for brass bar, no magnetic moment, likewise. So, when you are doing with bar magnets, dipole, um, external magnetic fields, this time periods and frequency, this becomes very key. And as earlier I have told you, if it is the case of B, different at different points, then also time period of frequency changing, comparison of frequency with the places as well. In the same case, now you see I am telling you, maybe a tougher example because of uh, length, but actually it is only 3 lines, 30 or 20 seconds also only. Now he says, now he says, uh, bar magnet suspended in earth's magnetic field with uh, another magnet, another magnetic source near that, like solenoid or whatever it is. Then, the time period of oscillation is supposing it is one second, he says, for the oscillation. Then he says, when the current in that source is reversed, when the current in that source is reversed, the time period T2 becomes maximum. It's earlier he says one second minimum. And now he says time period of reverse, reversing of the current, time period of the oscillation becomes a maximum of two seconds. Now, the question is, if that source is removed, what will be the time period of oscillation? Earlier, these are the time periods set to be with adjectives minimum and maximum. That external source is removed, now what will be the time period? In such case, t minimum, what is our condition? t is equal to 2 pi root i by m. Here it is the combination of two magnetic fields, right? Therefore, here I am writing it should be b1 plus r minus b2. Why I am taking only plus or minus? Because it is the case of minimum and maximum only. And now when it is b1 plus b2, the denominator is maximum and its time period is minimum. The other case of b1 minus b2, this will be maximum. So that is what is our first take. Remember? So in such case, what happens? Suppose if I am writing that b1 plus b2 case, it is minimum. So b1 plus b2 is equal to, I am squaring on either side and doing correction. And this 2 by i and m are all common terms. Anyways, they are going to be cancelled out. Therefore, b1 plus b2 equals a constant by t square and written. Supposing if it is t1, I am going to test t1 square. Constant upon t1 square. Now, similarly, if you write it as b1 minus b2, because when current is reversed in that source, we know that current direction reversal. Yes? Right hand rule says that. Left becomes right or up down, downwards. Therefore, for B1 minus B2 case, it will be C by T2 square. That is T1 for this combination and T2 for this combination if I take. Now, supposing 1 is removed, what is that? Supposing I say B2 is removed. B2 is removed, there will be one thing. Therefore, now I am writing T3 is equal to, or this time only B1 is there. So, B1 is equal to C by T3 square. Now, if you call them as equation 1, 2 and 3, what is that you observe? What is that you observe? How do you, I mean, can you find any relation between these two equations? Now, supposing if you add these two, what is that you get? 2B1 you get and here you have B1. So, what is that? You can find a relation now. Equation 3, equation 3 is equal to equation 1 plus 2 times 2. Is that okay? 
equation three is equation three is yeah equation one plus equation two by two you are getting is it okay yeah that is c by t one square plus c by t two squares because earlier it was addition of nhs now i am doing the rhs c by t one square plus c by t two square is equal to c by t three square therefore is that t three is equal to t one t two upon root of yes t one square plus t two square is that so that is how so it's a very happens to be a little question if we don't use our logic quickly here I, it is all about understanding the data. It is minimum and maximum the keywords which will tell us about this B1 plus B2 or B1 minus B2 like that. So, and of course, yes, it's one more. 1 by 2 is the right. 1 by 2. So, it is 1 by root 2 is also there. Yes. By 2 term is there, you see here. So, this is 1 by 2 is also there, right? 1 by 2 term is there. One by two, therefore it becomes one by root two. So that will be the case of comparison of uh, moments, or likewise given with uh, a different matrix inductions, combination of matrix inductions is also possible. See, this is what is beauty in uh, in the subject of physics. The different, all different possible combinations that a student has to think of. Now here earlier we said one bar magnet suspended in one uniform magnetic field. There was only one magnet versus one field. Now it can be different possibilities like it can be a pair of magnets coupled at some angle. I will show you that. Suspended in external uniform magnetic field. Or else one magnet suspended in a region containing two magnetic fields B1 bar and B2 bar at some angle. And so on, there is no end for that, it can go on. So now I am doing basically these two things. Supposing if, if this is what is an external magnetic field, induction B, in which I have now placed an, an arrangement. Supposing that arrangement, to be simple, I am giving you as, to be simple, I am giving you as, right, I am writing with blue. Supposing these are two dipoles, supposing I call this as M1 bar and I call this as M2 bar, suspended like this, then M2 bar is along B bar and M1 bar is perpendicular to B bar. Initially, this is what is the placement. Now, what happens? The torque on M1 is 0, maximum, sorry, maximum, and torque on second magnet with M2 bar is maximum because of this 90 degrees. Now, as a result, the combination is now bound to turn. Now, when it is turned, after some time, what is that happens? There comes an equilibrium position, equilibrium state. What is the equilibrium state and what is the condition is our question. Now, here you see, this was the initial position. Now, torque being acted on one of the magnets and since the combination is with a type, it's, it is as a combination, it tries such that Supposing final situation I am now showing. This is what is the final situation got such that this moment M1 bar and this moment is M2 bar. Now when two moments are there, what happens? We have to take the net magnetic moment. That is what is the case. That is what is the case. So I am writing this as M1 bar and this as M2 bar. Now this Equilibrium position, what happens? It is not M1 along B bar or M2 along B bar. Both things does not arise. But what arises is the effective magnetic moment, right? The resultant of M1 bar and M2 bar will be along B bar is the result. Along B bar. So now if this is what is equilibrium position, this vector is now M1 bar plus M2 bar. Supposing it makes some angle theta with the M1 bar or M2 bar, what will be our answer? Now, in the case of perpendicular magnetic moment, supposing this is what is M1 bar and this is what is M2 bar 
and this is what is the resultant m1 bar plus m2 bar such that angle with m1 bar is supposing this is theta from this geometry you can write that theta is equal to tan inverse yes tan inverse of m2 by m1 so this angle theta with m1 bar when i have taken it is tan inverse of m2 by m1 therefore each of the dipoles now makes some angles alpha and beta theta and theta to given by these two conditions so here in this condition what is theta theta is equal to tan inverse m2 by m1 this is angle made by b bar with the, yes m1 bar so for the other angle it will be complemented that you will get as theta is equal to cot inverse i mean if this is what is for theta 1 and uh, this is theta 2 is equal to cot inverse of m2 by m1 for b bar with the m2 bar so here one magnetic field versus two dipoles supposing we read the other case other case, I am taking one dipole suspended in a region containing two magnetic fields. Two magnetic fields at some angle. And this leads to a very, very, very popular uh, ruling in uh, magnetostatics as well. Supposing here are two magnetic fields. These are two magnetic fields. I write it as B1 bar and B2 bar. And uh, the angle between them is alpha. Suppose in this field, if we suspend a bar magnet, what happens? Supposing now a bar magnet of moment M is suspended parallel to B1 bar, then what happens? Due to B1 bar, the torque tau 1 will be 0, sign 0, 0. Already it is along the field, but it experiences a torque due to B2. Similarly, if it is aligned around B2, tau 2 becomes 0, but because of B1, there will be a torque. And therefore, in either case, when in such case, in such a space, when dipole is suspended, finally the dipole will come to an equilibrium position. So this is what I am showing you, the dipole moment M bar coming into equilibrium position, making an angle theta with B1 bar I am taking. Whenever we are taking the theta, in any case, the definition of theta is very important. Don't ever say theta is angle, which is, which is the two uh, parameters that we are taking and where actually the angle is considered is very important. Theta angle made by this resultant uh, equilibrium position with B1 bar I'm taking. In such case, what is the meaning? This equilibrium refers to rotational equilibrium. There are two torques, one clockwise and another clockwise due to B1 and B2. Then it should be the case of tau 1 is equal to tau 2, the net torque equal to 0. So for net torque to be zero, the condition is M B1 sin theta because it is angle with B1 bar. So torque with B1 bar, M B1 sin theta is M B2 times sine of 90, uh, this is alpha minus theta, it becomes right. So this is what is theta, the total angle was alpha, the second B2 bar angle will be alpha minus theta. Therefore here what you get? Here you get B2 is equal to B1 times sin theta. This is sin theta upon sin of alpha minus theta. So for any given values of uh, alpha and theta, this can be an expression. B1 given B2 alpha, anything like that. Say 1, 2, 3 and 4. Four parameters are there. This is how you look at any formula or any concept. How many parameters we are getting related and then the given data, what is that to be known? I mean, what are the knowns and what is the unknown? Only one unknown direct substitution and getting answer for that. Supposing there are two unknowns, then it is writing equation twice and solving for two unknowns. Regular simplification techniques that we did in the classroom. Now in this, the special case would be if alpha is equal to 90 degrees, that is B1 bar perpendicular to B2 bar. This is what is the famous rule in macrostatics, right? If alpha is equal to 90, this 90 minus theta becomes sine of 90 minus theta cos theta. Therefore, our result is B2 is equal to B1 tan theta. What a rule in microstatics and it's called a tangent law of magnetism. Tangent law of magnetism. See, it may not be in our uh, insert syllabus uh, in the name of tangent law, but as I have told you, it is the case of understanding the torque, dipole, external field. In such case, the different possible combinations like two dipoles 
in a single magnetic field or one dipole in a combination of magnetic fields. Not even extension of syllabus, it is only understanding of the concept, you know, tangent law of magnetism. B2 is equal to B1 tangent when I am taking you, please make it sure that this theta is the angle made by the equilibrium position with the B1 bar. This tangent law is made principle in one galvanometer, one device what is called as a tangent galvanometer. Again, may not be in our NCRT syllabus, but since we have already learned about magnetic induction in circular coils, it can be a question in Mega C. How? Here B1 refers to BH, Earth's magnetic induction. B1 refers to Earth's magnetic induction. The other one, B2, refers to a circular coil. Magnetic induction produced by circular coil, which carries current, of course. So for such circular coil, what is the magnetic induction at the center? It is already a very popular case which we have been using. Mu naught I by 2R, I'm sorry, there is also a n number of terms. It is the coil. Magnetic induction produced by the coil at the center of the coil. E mu naught Ni by 2R is equal to BH tan theta. BH tan theta. Therefore, writing expression for current I equal to BH. 2 times dhr upon mu naught n times tan theta times tan theta and this is what is the famous rule a probable question though it is not a topic according to ncrt so this we write it as i is equal to k theta this uh, k is equal to 2 bh times r by mu naught n is what is called as Reduction factor of tangent galvanometer. Now here also again it is measurement of current, therefore it is galvanometer. Earlier also we have discussed one galvanometer by name moving curl galvanometer. This is a tangent galvanometer because of it is based on the principle of tangent of reduction factor. You remember the tangent galvanometer moving curl galvanometer, we simply said k as galvanometer constant. Again, an important parameter that we have discussed yesterday and what factors does it depend. Here, this is reduction factor. Look at all the terms, BH value, R, the radius of the coil, N, number of terms, mu naught. So any changes of these parameters, a change of K, a change of K. Therefore, here what is again comparison? I remember when I write comparison method, it is a, in fact a solution for large number of questions. Understanding the data, what is that is given, what is that is changing and how to substitute the changes, finally getting our answers, like that you have to see, not only a kind of ratio examples. So this is what is I1 by I2 is equal to K1 by K2 times tan theta, 1 by tan theta 2. Hmm? Now what all possible K1 by K2, again you can write number of terms like that. So this is another tangent galvanometer, a popular case in the magnetism topic that we are discussing.